I think that the more we all start viewing Google as a company who wants to be perceived as a sort of warmer, more colorful, more inviting version of Apple, the more I think a lot of their decisions are going to start to make sense. This is a company that, while on one hand, is very experimental and is willing to just throw random things at the wall and see what sticks, at the same time as being a company who can be very, very stubborn, hard-headed, and just absolutely not care if the thing that you care about isn't the thing that they care about. They're just willing to say, well, we just don't care about that thing, and we're just not going to worry about it. Every year, a new Pixel comes out, and every year, people complain that the Tensor processor isn't fast enough, that it benchmarks like a mid-range processor, and Google every year says, we don't care about benchmarks. We care about what the phone is capable of doing. They just aren't concerned with that, and there are many places where that rings true. There's what people say, and what they care about, and what Google cares about. And if that Venn diagram doesn't overlap, Google doesn't really seem to care. We are now on the third Pixel Fold. We've had Pixel tablets. And yet, things like multitasking, split screening, and in particular, floating windows have really never been a big priority for Google. Samsung users, users of other similar devices, we enjoy more features than we have on Pixel devices. We can do more things. And again, Google just says, it's not really a priority for us, so we're busy doing other things. We still do not have, for instance, floating windows on Pixel devices. But it appears as though that finally might be about to change. You may remember one calendar year ago, we thought this was going to happen then. Android 16 could let you put any app in a floating bubble. Here's a first look. This is coming from Android Authority. This is reporting by uh, Michelle Ramon. And what they kind of uncovered in some betas, this was in the Android 15 QPR 1 beta 2, and again, this is sort of like a buried thing that he went in and found a way to enable, was this ability to long press on an app icon and then select bubble. And then what would happen is you would have this application running in one of those floating bubbles. You can move it around and then you can tap on it and it expands out and fills up the screen and then you could kind of minimize it down to this bubble view. You can actually see a video of this in action within this article. They're going to long press on an icon, click on that bubble view, it pops up in the corner. And on a tablet device, there's actually this little bar in the bottom right-hand corner that you should be able to see now where the bubbles kind of get minimized down to. And this was the general idea. And this is what we thought Google was going to be doing for floating windows. And I said way back then when this got announced that I hoped this was not the way that Google <laughs> would do this. I want proper floating windows. There's no need to reinvent the wheel here. We don't need to have this bubble view thing, right? Now, I'm not entirely sure about this, but if you look at this, there is a handle up here. And that does give me some hope that you're able to sort of drag this around but you couldn't, or I didn't see it happening in that video. And in these screenshots, it looked like it filled up the entire screen. So we were able to resize this. I'm not sure exactly what was going on. But to me, it just seemed like a weird way to go about doing this. Well, now, October the 25th, Michelle is back with another article. And this is another instance of Google just experimenting, trying things. And hopefully this is a better way for Google to implement this. And I'll get into why I'm hopeful here in just a moment. Headline reads, Google is working on another huge multitasking upgrade for Android tablets, working on a feature that will let Android tablet users put any app into a floating bubble. Now, this is another thing that's been dug out of a beta version. In this instance, the 2510 Canary release. They found some strings within the Pixel Launcher app, and the strings suggest an educational promo appearing when you first interact with the taskbar with a new tutorial. If you scroll down, you can see this animation here. So we're dragging an icon off of the taskbar, Dragging it to the right or, of course, the left will implement split screen. So you've already got an app open, dragging an icon up, it shows you, hey, you can split screen. But if you drag that icon to the bottom corner, and presumably 
either corner would work, but in this instance, they're showing the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the animation transitions to being a floating window. Now, for me, just on its surface, I think that this makes a lot more sense than having to long press an icon and select an option, right? This just seems more intuitive to me. We're already used to doing these dragging gestures onto the screen to split screen. So dragging it to the corner makes sense. It's very similar to what the Honor Magic V5 does, just a different corner. Now what concerns me is the verbiage here. Here is the actual code itself. Drag to the bottom corners to make it float. Animation showing how to create a bubble from the taskbar using a drag gesture. So they're still calling this a bubble, which means that they're going to put their own Google spin on this. And that could potentially mean that like we saw in this prior article, I don't know if we're going to be able to do what you can do on a Samsung device where you can fully resize these things, not just in size, but aspect ratio as well. There is a handle there, so I'm really hopeful that you can move it. If you can't move it around, there's literally no point to this. This is just a dumb thing to do. You might as well just split screen. We have to be able to move it around. So I'm going to assume you can move it around. The resizing thing, it could be like a lot of Chinese OEMs where it just gets bigger or smaller, but you can't change the shape. It'd be really cool if you could change the shape, but that might not be happening. They're calling it a bubble, and we've seen how they've implemented bubbles already in the past with messaging apps, and I just, I want it to be more than a bubble. I want it to be a proper floating window. This is a better, cleaner, more, I think, logical gesture, but we need more than just that. It's also important to note that since this new implementation does rely on the taskbar, that's something you don't have on a normal phone. So you wouldn't necessarily have this feature floating windows on a normal slab phone. They're prioritizing larger screen devices. Personally, I think that that probably is fine. I don't know how often you're going to be doing floating windows on you know, your cover display, for instance. But it is another restriction that I think some people will be frustrated or irritated to see. Now, of course, this is something that was found in a Canary release, not even a proper beta. So this could change form by the time it is released. It could never be released. We saw something that was in a further along beta last year that did not get released, has never seen the light of day. So we don't know if and when this is ever going to see the light of day. But like Michelle says in this article, the fact that they made the animation does indicate they probably do intend on releasing this, but it could change and be tweaked before we actually see that. And when we will see that is definitely hard to say because it is in Canary, it could still be a little while. He does think that there's a chance we could see it in the QPR3 release. The beta for that has not started yet. It'd be really cool if when QPR3 beta 1 started, we had this feature and we could kind of see it firsthand and see what's going on. But for now, it is an animation and a series of strings that we are extrapolating from. But it at least does indicate... Google is trying to figure out how they want to do floating bubbles. I don't know why they won't just do it the way everyone else is already doing it. It works fine. That would be good. They have to do Google things, though, and make it their own. So hopefully it'll end up being really good. But guys, check out the link to that article in the description down below. You definitely need to go read it for yourself. And of course, that will help Android Authority. And they did the reporting, so you should definitely click that link down below and go check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments down below how much does you know the lack of these sorts of things push you away from pixel devices how much would this help if they did bring it to these devices relatively soon i'll see you on the next one and until next time stay nerdy my friends